Welcome back to the lab with Leo. Jim Everett is here. He is a photographer, an artist. Uh, he also does a great podcast on photography called Digital Snapshots. Yep. You can get that from his website. I took that. Dot com. Mm -hmm. I took that. I love that. That's yeah. a great name. Hi, Jim. Good to have you yeah. back. Good to be here. So we're going to talk about the panoramas mm. today. Why would you want to shoot a panorama? Well, this pan would be an example of a panorama, yeah. by the way. I'll just show it real quickly. That's a, that's a little one of Sydney Harbour. Why right. would you want to do it? One, because it's stunning. Yeah. Or two, because you want to show a street scene and give people the experience right. of being there. Right. Or three, because you want to show some little subject in detail, like from a huge view, people can say, I can see my house from here. Oh, that's that, neat. That kind yeah. of thing. Or show a huge context. Not everything lends itself to a panorama. I took some that, from a lookout and they're boring. It's right. just a, so what good. makes it a good panorama? You've got to have anchors. You've got to have a subject. You've got to have things that, that lock it together. Not, not just one. You might have multiple since it's so wide, yeah, right? exactly. But the same principles apply. You put your main subject in one of the third points, like a tic-tac-toe, right. divided into thirds right. on one of those four points, somewhere in that region, not near the edge, not right in the middle. So the Sydney Opera House here is right on one of those tic-tac-toe yeah, points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you've got to intuit it, and they work out differently when you stitch them together. But I'll be shown... Well, that's interesting. How many photos? did it take six. to make that so you don't this isn't one photo with a special camera this is six photos with a normal camera yep. that are then sewn together there used to be a time when you'd have to have cameras that would sweep around and paint right. paint the right. picture and all you took it with your nikon i took it with my nikon and there's a few techniques in taking it which is uh this is a d200 d200 which is a great nikon. Yes. i love them yep. and basically don't use wide angle because you get lens distortion we can fix that the curvature is going to be bad it is we can fix it with a product um called uh lens fix ci but let's not do it wrong in the first place yeah. what's the best focal length to normal. use normal 50, equivalent of 50 normal. millimeter the equivalent of 50 or even a bit of telephoto okay and when you're taking it um go from left to right because that's the way it'll stitch and you turn so that you are where you're going to finish and then lock your feet there and swing back around so, ah, so you're gonna so you yeah. set yourself up for the last one, but then you start here and you move like this. Because it's you're easier not to move your to feet. a normal position. Than so you don't use a tripod. Do you, use? you can use a tripod, but usually when I see a fantastic panorama, I don't have you it don't with have me. One with you, yeah. So I mean, if you can plan it, yes, use a tripod. Right. But here is here are a couple of really important things. One. See where the horizon is and make sure it's always in the Keep same place level. in every shot. Yeah. Because if you've got a slope and you go down, 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 <laughs> like you're not going to be up. able to put it together. You're going to have a little... Well, you'll bang. put it together, but it'll look like, you know, yeah. <laughs> the Sydney Harbour is pouring exactly. out. Exactly. So horizon okay. is important. The other thing I've noticed is you can't do a panorama with anything in the foreground. It really has to be a distant... It can be. If it's too close, you have to use a very small aperture, um, which means you use a slow shutter speed, which means there's a risk of movement. Right, right. So if you have something that's too close, you've got to use very very fast ISO. Now on this one you, you have the bridge here which is great I and mean, yes. it's really nice to see that in the foreground but 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 most of it is a distant shot. You also get parallax issues if you have something up close and so forth, right? You do. Yeah. And by the way, I climbed the Harbour Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he take it, he took it and he climbed it. Exactly. That's another website. So, well, all right, so we've got six images. We started here, we and did like this, we kept the horizon right, still. And you overlap. You Overlap by how much? Between 20 and 30 percent. That much. Some people say 50 because you have to give plenty of the points software has to, to find different points. So you're not, you're not really turning a lot. You're just going maybe 30 or 40 degrees each time. And here's a trick. What you have to do is look at what's on the right-hand side of the picture and remember all the little things there yeah. so that when you move over there, you can make sure you, you get the see overlap. It's still there. Because if you miss out a bit, you can never... There's no panorama. No, no interpolation software will fill in actual subjects. <laughs> right. So you've got six images. Is there an ideal number? It depends. I mean, if you're doing something for a full cylindrical, you might take more. Or if you're wanting to get more top and bottom and you turn your camera on uh, its side, you, would take you more. might take sure. a lot more. Right. Uh, sometimes the panorama, you might only want to take two, just to give a bit of a got wider it. view. Just depends what you're taking a picture depends of, Depends what you're taking a picture of. All right, of. so we've got our images. Now yep. what do we do? The next thing you need to do is to import them and to stitch them. I'm going to show you three programs very quickly. One is Calico from, it's either Kekus or Kekus, K-E-K-U-S dot com. Okay. The developer's very responsive, great guy. Calico. It, Calico. Calico. Okay. Um, it's about 30 bucks. Oh, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. all right. The other one is Double Take. Okay. And Double Take's around about the same price. All right. Uh, the prices are on the notes. So these are Mac programs? Mac programs. You'll run them on the photos and it'll automatically yep. do it. Now, doesn't Photoshop do this as well? It does. And each one, if, for example, if you want to do a very quick panorama without opening Photoshop and all that, Calico is great. Yeah. It, you just drop them in. It is very sophisticated algorithms, but it looks really simple. Okay. And just goes, like and that. I'll give you an example. 
example. And it's a lot less than Photoshop. Yes. Yeah. The other one is double take, and double take has more adjustments, and yeah. it's purely a panorama thing. A double take will do entirely, so you can do multiple ones. Photoshop will as well, and I'll also show you Photoshop. Okay. Let's have a quick look at Calico. Um, oh, one thing I should mention is before you do it, correct, do any lens correction. Um, and so on the individual images, you might want to go through those and make for, any for fixes. For example, I'll show you what lens correction looks like. This is in Photoshop. Isn't that gorgeous? That's, wow. that's the inside of an Art Deco cinema that in L.A. stunning. I did a project for them, the Majestic the Crest lighting. Cinema. How did you get the lighting so good? That's Tripod bracketing and then... Bracketing. And you did an HDR, did you? You, you merged these photos uh, together? This was before I learned about HDR. This I did it all amazing. manually. That's amazing. So, uh, and I only had a 3.5 lens, too. Wow. So let's Look come down to... Um, we want to go to lens fix, which is up here, and it's... What are we going to correct for here? I'll show you. You watch this. And it will go in. Now... So this is kind of a wide-angle shot. I want shot. you to watch in the middle of the picture. Okay. In the middle of the picture. So there's some curvature here. See? Oh, yeah. Fix the curvature, didn't it? Yeah? You yep. can see? Yep. With and without. So the lines are straight. Lines are straight. Really important. Then, once you've corrected... Actually, you should denoise it first. The first thing you, you should do is denoise de it. Denoise. De then, then lens fix. fix. Then lens fix. Okay. And I'll cover this again when I'm talking about large prints in another okay. episode. And well, we it's, all, it's, all on, it's all on the notes. Yeah. The order is important, though. I'm going to denoise this area here. So we to denoise that, because sometimes if you're shooting dark, and I wanted a panorama there as I did, you've got to denoise it. So I come down to picture code, noise ninja, from picture code. I was talking to the CEO the other day. There are a bunch of scientists there, really smart. And it's all math nowadays, isn't it? Is, it? it yeah. is. Yeah. And I, see this area here? What, you, what we're going to do is you can profile the image. There's a lot of stuff there, but he said all that you really need to know is the strength and the smoothness. Okay. But... It's pretty straightforward, and I'll show you the before and after just to save time. So let's put this away. We're done with that now. And this is the before, and that's the after. I don't oh, know if you can see. One of them looks like it was uh, done by a pointillist painter. The other one looks like an actual photo. There's yeah. a huge difference. But you have to be real careful. Hard not to see to... on TV, maybe, yeah. but, boy, we can see it here. But don't yeah. overdo it. because This was 1600 ISO. That's why it was grainy. Really fast. So this is taking the grain out of the photo. Takes the grain out. Okay, we got just a, f a little time left. So okay. let's... So anyway, let's look at, let's look at stitching. Um, one of the ones is uh, Calico. Yeah. We'll look at quickly at Calico. So this is the simple one. This is the simplest one. And with Calico, uh, we take these pictures here. Uh, actually, I'll do these because there's fewer of them. And we drag these into... Whoa, hit the wrong key there. Drag these into here, like that. And what it does... It automatically loads them and assembles them. We have to make sure they're in the right order, which they're not. This is far right. This one I didn't take very well. You can see the horizon's a bit... It's moving around. To yeah. use an Australian term, a bit wonky. <laughs> <laughs> so Kate would know what that means. Let's, I'll, <laughs> let's align that. This is a view from... So it's actually doing the alignment. Wow, that's yeah. cool. And... This, the developer makes very sophisticated panorama programs where you right. do it all manually. This one, it just does it automatically. So it's doing it right now. It's doing it as we speak, and it's not a very fast machine either. So um, there it is. But now you'll crop it to get those black yeah. marks out. But you know what? Cropped, you would never know that the horizon was wonky. Let's, let's show the big... You have a, a big printout let's here. Let's have a look Did at you the do one. this with Calico or Photoshop? Photoshop. Or? This is, this is Photoshop. one of, of Sydney, okay? This so. is a big version of the Sydney Harbour one. Yeah. Look at this. And how did you print this? I did that on an Epson R1800. Look at that. Is that gorgeous? This would be... You frame this, you put this on the wall, everybody would say, wow. Wow. So... Isn't that beautiful? And the layered file was half a gigabyte. What resolution do you need for something this big? Uh, I try and work with 300 DPI okay. or PPI, but for the, something this big, you can get away with 240. And, and, and a 6 megapixel camera be enough for this? You could do it with a 6 megapixel camera. Amazing. I've shot some beautiful stuff with a Nikon 6 megapixel. It's amazing. Yeah. And in Photoshop, very quickly, go down to Automate Photo Merge. It does it automatically. For, in in photo fact, you don't even have to put them in order. Photoshop's so smart, he just does it all. It's very smart. Jim Everett is a photographic artist. You can see that. You can uh, watch his podcast at itookthat.com. It's also his blog, his gallery, jamesgordongallery.com on the web. And we have show notes, I mean pages of this, because I know we went fast. All the details, everything you need to know, and links to all the software, too, at our website, labwithleo.com. Thank you, mate. My pleasure. All no right. Worries. No worries. <laughs> no worries.